What's up, fellow Clashers? It's Apollyon here. Grateful to be able to bring you the latest playoff CWO war recap between WHF2 and LT. Great war, as you can see. Super close, 83 to 83, with a difference of 0.13 percentage down to the last attack. So props to them. It was a really fun war and uh, wish them the best. There you go real quick. Just take a look at them, the level 14 clan. And let's also do a six-pack shout-out uh, for our guys. And you can see it was uh, we struggled a little bit. Uh, no 10v10s, one 11v10, uh, and then two or four Town Hall 9 six-packs. So great job to everybody there that's on that uh, shout-out. And, uh, you know, good job to everybody else as well. Uh, some of us were doing scouts instead, so we didn't get the ability or, or opportunity to do six-packs. Um, you know, but uh, it worked as a team, so and that's why we win as a team. So great job to, to everybody involved there. Let's look at some of the attacks, starting with number two, great 10v11 hit. And it's really cool because uh, we did a lot of loon here. And you don't really see a La Loon for a two-star attempt on a Town Hall 11. It's mainly ground and, and you know, like with uh, witches or bowlers or and golems and things like that to try to get that percentage. But the whole point of this is to having these la uh, Lava Hounds and Loons come into this base and clear out all of the, the uh, defenses and then have minions and the pups clean up all the trash buildings and drop the two royals in at the end to just beeline their way right in to that uh, town hall and take care of it so you can see we're, we're taking care of all those defenses from nine o'clock to three o'clock and unfortunately we don't get the eagle artillery and we don't get those couple of expos or ad's ad not a big deal at all does no damage to king or queen so that's not a problem we're going to send a hog in here just a second to pull that clan castle and use the healer archer trick to make sure that it's completely out of the way for the king and queen so the queen does not get stuck on it which is a really really good strategy so we're going to speed things up as we're using minions and uh, everything else to do the funneling there we go with the hog pulling the, the lava hound and the uh, uh, the loon in there dropping the archers at the seven o'clock uh, spell factory and then we'll drop the healer right behind them as that um uh Eagle Artillery is targeting some of the defense, the, the other offensive troops. There we go. We've dropped the King and Queen in here. Now, the King has to worry about this uh, uh, Expo, which is really not a big deal, as he'll come in here, be able to take care of some of those Skellies. The Enemy King and the Expo, using the ability in just a second, has to kind of fade away from that uh, Eagle Artillery shots. But at this point... The queen has nowhere to go but into this core. We've already got the percentage plus, and we only need to get uh, that town hall with the ability. That queen is easily going to be able to get that. So there we go, popping the ability as the eagle artillery is shooting, and uh, then she'll take care of that, and we just got to get as, many, as much percentage as we possibly can. And we'll go ahead and fast forward that as the eagle artillery is still going to take out a couple more. So we get our 59%. And uh, we've got our two-star hit there. So really nice, nicely done. Let's look at number six for an 11v10 dip. And now we're not going to look at that one. Sorry. I wanted to see, uh, I believe it's this one instead. Yeah, I wanted to see uh, hogs. We've seen too many uh, witch attacks, too many of those. I, I wanted to focus on this. It was a really nice one. So we'll watch as the golems are sent in at the 6 o'clock with the warden behind it. And uh, the queen is kind of going to go on her own mission uh, where she's going to start walking up towards that 9 o'clock area. And I think the reason we wanted to do that was uh, to get away from the lava hound and loon in the clan castle as there's really nothing that except the wizard or, or two that could... Um, uh, focus on that so the queen is going to go on a suicide mission up top there goes the trip okay so it's not even a loon it's just a wizard and i think an archer so that lava hound is going to do absolutely nothing to these bowlers and king taking a jump to get that uh, air defense and the cannon as well as both of the king and queen and at this point we can almost start sending in the uh the hounds the other, uh, the, the archer and the wizard in the clan castle have been taken care of already. And the, these, uh, hound, these hogs are not going to be affected by that hound in any way, shape, or form. We have three heals and one freeze for the back end 
uh, Inferno Tower at around 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock, whatever you want to call it. We've just used our first out of three heals, so we still have two more heals left. And uh, we've got the hogs coming in from noon as well. There we go with the freeze and uh, the heal to heal over that giant bomb. And by the time the freeze wears out, uh, all those hogs will be right on top of the Inferno Tower. Never had a chance. Probably did just uh, 100 damage or whatever. And then we've got a billion hogs going in for that last Tesla. That's all that she wrote. And uh, we're going to go ahead and watch them just crush the rest of the spaces. Air skellies do absolutely nothing to hogs as well. And we got ourselves a three-star hit. All right, let's take a look at just two of the 10v10s. And we'll look at this one. Just the, these attacks were just really nicely thought out. I know I, I keep talking about four ADs on one side of the base. Just don't do it. Or you know what? If you're going to war against us, do it. Please put all the ADs on one side of the base. That allows us to go ahead and do a very, very simple queen walk and crush it with dragons. So we've got a little bit of an investment to get that clan castle, the, the hound, and the loon, as well as getting eliminating one of those uh, air defenses with just a couple of hasted loons in there. So poison goes down to take care of that, uh, that loon and the minions helping out with that. And then we've got the queen popping that hound. So let's speed this up a little as she's doing her queen walk. And it's all about the funneling right here. We've got a bunch of dragons and loons. And uh, the queen is going to stand in a rage, take care of that enemy king. Don't think we're getting the enemy queen here. So uh, we're going to use the dragons for that. And don't have to worry about any of the clan castle coming out. It's already been taken care of. King is going to funnel up at the top from that 9 to 12 area on the outside to push those um, dragons through the base. Queen is a little bit under fire, but still doing great with health. And we have two rages of which we're not even going to use for the queen because we'll use it to push the dragons through this the core. And there we go with the first one. And the queen is going to step up into that Inferno Tower in just a second right here. But she's got quite a bit of health, and that Inferno Tower is really not going to do too much. Dropping that second rage on that core dragons, they are going to push into that Inferno Tower in just a second. Take care of that Skelly's uh, trap, and then just in the nick of time, as the queen is getting pretty low in health, they uh, take care of that Inferno Tower, and just the timing of this is impeccable. Uh, the healers are right back on that queen, so even if all of these uh, dragons died, which they're not going to, that queen would easily be able to clean up the rest of those two-point defenses and the uh, trash buildings, but we still have a dragon up, and we're going to have almost a completely full health archer queen at the end of this raid from beginning to end. Really, really nice attack. And then we'll look at the last one of 10v10 and then jump into a 9v9. We've got a semi-mass hog attack here, a queen walk mass hog. And uh, I was very fortunate to be able to one to, to be the one scouting this particular attack. And oddly enough, we used the minor attacks against it. We used witch attacks against it. Um, but we went back to the strategy that I used initially on the scout, which was probably the best one to begin with. So, um, you know, it was really good effort on everybody's part to try all these different type of attacks. And I think this is probably the fourth or fifth uh, hit on this base to get this uh, three-star hit. But Nicholas, just a beast when it comes to 10v10, getting tons of value on that queen walk there and just doing some funneling uh, things with uh, the baby dragon and some of the archers, which are going to get sniped here. So they are going to get those um, those camps. But the, the point of, of this queen walk, you know, to get these defenses as well, as the uh, the enemy royals that was what was messing up our minor attack and uh, the other attacks that were done on the base those royals were really making it difficult so being able to take out that king and queen with the with the uh, with the friendly queen is just huge value so we've got the king and the uh, couple valkyries doing their best the easy investment to get uh, that inferno tower as well as some of the pathing too for these uh, um, these hog riders as they go into the base at noon and then the queen is going to clean up that uh, loon in the clan castle and the king is going to tank the best that he can for both the lava hound as well as some of those expos in the core we've got the first uh, heal going down for those uh, hog riders and then we've got one more heal and another rage i think if it was me 
probably would have brought a freeze. I think you get a little bit more value out of a freeze there instead of a rage, but it still worked out. And uh, the rage is a little bit more versatile to use on the queen just in case we needed to use to use that but the queen is up full health with healers right behind and then we still have the um hog riders making their way through the air defense is going to do absolutely nothing to them they're going to turn back on the skellies uh and are going to take care of that and then we're just going to clean up the rest of the base we've got a full health uh, queen that's uh, doing her thing does pop the lava hound unfortunately but we've got just enough amount of hogs that those pups are not going to make the difference although it could have been pretty bad as i think that attack was at two minutes and 55 seconds so if that those pups killed all those hogs then uh, we would not have had enough time for the queen to get in there and uh, take care of that so really good job and then we'll just go down to number 15 which uh, i was able to hit and just using a witch slap, I mean, you can just look at bases. If it's got a narrow entry where you can do an easy funneling job, again, look at those air defenses. Not all four of them are on one side, but they're all pretty much glumped up there in the middle towards the back. So uh, easily uh, taken care of. Drop in the, mi the minions to clean those builder huts at 6 o'clock. And then... Uh, dropping the witches with the healers behind to start the funneling. One golem is the only thing that's necessary for this. Getting a Tesla farm was really awesome on the entry. This is a fresh hit, but um, it was just a tons of value as a Tesla farm cannot do anything to those healed witches. And then we've got to, uh, that other Tesla at uh, the, the kind of the 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock area. But this base is almost already crushed at this point. Um, the Lava Hound is just going to make things that much uh, smoother as the King and Bowlers will be able to skate right through there under a heel using that second jump. They're going to get the enemy queen and then they're going to turn their attention on that enemy king and take him out as well. So everything's just going really, really well. The, the witches decide to take the very difficult way in at uh, 4 o'clock. Instead of going around the base, they go into the base, which a helps out a little bit on those pups as they pop. But other than that, it's just kind of an annoyance because they cannot get to the rest of the base without punching through some more walls. So we still have a group of witches up at the uh, 10 o'clock area doing their thing. Absolutely no problem there. Uh, they're just taking care of all those defenses and trash buildings. I've got a king that's uh, down to half health and a queen that has full health with full ability or whatever ability there is no such thing as a full ability there is either an ability or not so the king is going to pound through the wall with the help of the queen uh just taking care of these last defenses pop the queen ability because why not and then we've got a builder hut up at uh, noon and we've got a builder hut at uh, three o'clock that get taken out really really cool uh was able to get that for my first hit fresh three um and then i did a scout after that so anyway uh good job to everybody whf2 we really had a good time hopefully you guys enjoyed this like subscribe if you haven't already we're looking forward to the next uh matchup i think it's jay off uh who last uh war or this this previous cwl war um, just got an 89 out of 90 stars, which uh, is pretty something. Uh, it's amazing, but it's, wow. I mean, 89 out of 90 with four Town Hall 11s. So they had three uh, 11 v 11 attacks. So we're, we've got that coming up, I think, uh, this weekend. So we'll, we'll see how we do against that. Um, so anyway, go ahead and use these attacks. Get used to the different strategies, spell compositions, Practice makes perfect, right? Get those six-star clan wars and practice those six-star attacks, those three-star attacks.